Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cover. I am Penge and welcome back to City of Gangsters, where last time we discovered that our own brother Leonard Cupboard here is working for the Hewitt outfit. He is working for our rivals. It's all very shocking and very sad and the situation might get even worse because I think today we need to go and have a fight with the Hewitts. They are getting way too close for comfort and I know I've said this quite a few times before, I know, but today we're actually going to go ahead and do it. We do need to take them out of the picture. However, before all the bullets start flying, I do wonder if we could go and have a quick chat with our dear brother and maybe get him to join us. Maybe we could show him the error of his ways and bring him over to our side. And I know a few people in the comments have asked us to give this a go. So I think it's well worth a try. We do have three favours with him, which could be very handy indeed. Although it could be a bit dangerous, but I think we have to try. We have to give it a go. So Penge Cupboard, whereabouts are you right now? Okay, you're over there. So I think what we'll do is we'll get Penge Cupboard to head over in this direction. So pull up. I mean, where's uh, where's Leonard? Leonard's over there. So if we sort of pull up over here, if we go over there, and then we'll just wait. And then when we see Leonard in a good spot on his own, we'll sort of pop in and say hi. And then if he's agreeable, brilliant. If not, we can then just, you know, quickly retreat back into the safety of our own territory. I think that's what we will do. So, okay, right. Let's keep an eye on Leonard. Because right now, if we drove in, they would probably kill us. Because, you know, there's uh, lots of them and one of us. And we're not that good at fighting either. So we want to do this in a nice way. So here we go. Leonard, where are you? Leonard, you've gone really, really far away. Okay, okay. I see how this is going to go. We're going to play a game of wait for the Leonard, are we? Um, yeah, he needs to be sort of somewhere around here where we could go and see him. Yeah, particularly down here is no good because we've not discovered that yet. So it'll take us absolutely ages to get down to this sort of uh, this part of town. So that's no good at all. Um, legitimate operation is producing too many resources that aren't being used up. Okay, right. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Hang on. We can sort that out. If we've got a slight issue with the uh, with the storeroom here, fifty six percent full. Yeah, lots of hops. Lots of hops being sort of produced. Let's get rid of. I don't know. What if we get rid of twenty one lots? That should be plenty. So fifty six, thirty nine percent full. Brilliant. And Something has stalled. Ah, okay, hang on, hang on. What is the problem? It's a lack of malt syrup. Okay, how much malt syrup do we have? 0 0.8. Oh, okay, that's not very much at all. That's a very minimal amount. Okay, hang on a second, hang on. So malt syrup. Ah, yes, we've got it sort of lit up on this thing here. I think we pick some up from there and there. Where else could we get some from? There's some malt syrup. Ah, there's some all the way over here. Do you know what? Do you know what we could do? Where's our, where's our croc person? Where's Eugene? Eugene. Okay, so as well as picking up some crocs, could you also pick up a little bit of malt syrup on your way by and just drop that off into, into uh, the sort of, you know, the main sort of beer place, into that place there, Agnes's place. That's the name I was looking for, Agnes's place. That would be really handy. If he could do that, that would be very useful indeed. Okay, right, hang on. Let's see if we can make that work. So can we do that? So here we go. Right, so... Do you go over, yeah, you're quite near, you go over to here, so just pop over to there. So hang on a second, add a step, we want to buy malt syrup, wherever that is, there it is, from, not from there, uh, right, okay, hang on, I don't know which one it is, so we'll just keep pressing the buttons, there we go, Midtown Market. So, yes please, save that step. Now the only thing is, that is in a completely silly place right now, so we need to make sure it's actually at the right point, so I think... It looks like it's going to be there. So he goes to there, picks up Crocs, goes to there, buys malt syrup, goes here, Crocs, and then goes sort of all the way back over here again, which is all absolutely fine. And then he needs to go here to drop off the malt syrup. Okay, so the final thing is at Agnes's place. Drop off, hang on a minute, storage drop off at Agnes's place. Drop off malt syrup, because you should have picked up quite a bit of it. So there we go. And that is it. And then, yeah, just repeat. Okay, okay, let's see if that helps. Hopefully, hopefully it will. Hopefully that minor change is okay for Eugene to sort of handle. Because, you know, he's picking up something else now. He's he's absolutely fine with Crocs. Oh, he's got Crocs absolutely sorted. Now he's got malt syrup. A little bit trickier. But you know what, Eugene? It's fine. You'll be fine. You'll be good with it. Okay, right. Where are we? Where is... Hang on. Let's get back onto here. Right, Penge Cupboard is just there. And Leonard Cupboard is down there. Okay, next turn. And... Something exciting has happened because there's exciting music playing. Something has stalled, which is okay. That's a thing. Yeah, okay. It's, it's the beer place, isn't it? Aha. Aha. Okay, no. 
No, it looked like Leonard might have come up here, but no, Leonard's cleared off back over in that direction again. Okay, this, this could take a while. This could take a little while. However, however, we could, whilst we're here, pop over and have a chat to, uh, ooh, hang on. Hang on, that's an unusual route. Oh, okay, no, it's fine. It just goes around this way. Uh, let's have a chat with Edwin, because he does have something for us. I mean, I expect it to be crowbars, if I'm honest, but here we go. What did we pay for? About the products I paid for, it's 10 crowbars. Okay. <laughs> Edwin, Edwin, do you have shares in a crowbar company? Is that what's going on? Um, do you know what? Put them into the lovely storeroom of Peter's American Meats and Cheese. Um, have you got anything nice? Have you got anything nice? Got anything for me? Some moonshine. Okay, don't mind if I do. 38 moonshine. Ah, hang on. Hang on. That can sort this out. Or it could go, ooh, do we complete a mission? Or do we kind of go part way toward a mission? I mean, this one here is more useful. Because that will get us whiskey, I believe, in the long run. Yeah, do you know what? Let's go and drop that off all the way over there. Oh my goodness me. Oh, we can make it. Okay, that's fine. We'll drop off a bit over there. Is there any moonshine in here? No, not at all. Ah, yes, because of course, yes, we're struggling for the neutral alcohol. Right, I must remember to go and check out Steve. <laughs> Steve, hang on a second, hang on. Right, here is some of the stuff you wanted, although not everything. Right, so that's gone some way. We're about halfway there. Right, Steve, 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 Steve. Right, you've, you've, you've recovered. I think, did you get injured last time? I can't remember, but whatever the case. Right, Steve, you need to go over to here which is a little bit dangerous, but I'm sure you will be fine. So you make your way down there. In fact, hang on. Are these people new? Maybe they are new gang people just there. It looks like they might be because we've not got any of their sort of, uh, any buildings sort of uncovered yet. But if they are, hang on, the Royal Boys. Hang on a second. Stands independent. Ah, okay. Yeah, that could be quite handy. If we go and chat to them and get them to become compliant, that might complete one of our end of year goals which would be very, very good indeed. Okay, there we go. So that's uh, that's what Steve's going to do. He's going to sort of you know, have a chat with them and then go and pick up some neutral alcohol and then come all the way back over here and hopefully kickstart the whole sort of moonshine operation again. That would be very nice. In the meantime, is there anybody with a little icon thing that's implying they might know someone who might be useful to us? Somebody that could possibly get us some neutral alcohol. That would be really useful, wouldn't it? We don't seem to have any of that at all around the place. But no, I don't think there is. Lots of job kind of opportunities going on. There's a lot of that going on. But no, nobody's saying, hey, I know somebody who might be of use to you. Uh, ah, there, there. General cold storage. They've got that thing. They know someone who might be useful. Okay, let's head over in that direction. Um, oh, we've got to go and speak to Officer Gerald. Okie doke. Right, hang on. We'll go and sort that out as well. But right now, um, yeah, this is us. Uh, okay, right. Favour, support, no, not support. There you go. Buying what I've got for sale or selling anything I need. Let's say you're making moonshine. Interesting. You should meet Francis. Okay, right. Please tell me that Francis is a chemist who has lots and lots of neutral alcohol to sell. Because if they want to buy the moonshine, that's a bit of a problem. He has a supply of neutral alcohol that he uses for um, sterilising. The only thing is, he's in Hewitt territory. Ah... Uh, Okay, okay, right, this is fine. This is absolutely fine. That's just going to reinforce the point that they do need to be removed from the picture. So, yeah, okay, fine. Over there we go. Um, he works at a lumber place. He works at a lumber place and he uses the neutral alcohol for sterilising. <laughs> sterilising what exactly? I suppose maybe they might get cuts or splinters or whatever at the, uh, the lumber place. Okay, that is unusual, but right you are. Um, okay, that's good. And then, uh, yes, Officer Gerald. Where are you, Officer Gerald? Ah, you're only over there. Okay, so hang on a minute. Hang on, Penge, Cupboard. You should be able to pop into here. Pick up, I mean, you've probably got quite a bit of money on you anyway. Oh, you've got loads of money. You've got absolutely loads of money on you. Uh, right, pop over to Officer Gerald. Hello, Officer Gerald. It's a pleasure to see you again. I think you like us enough for us to give you a lovely, generous donation. So there you go. The Officer Gerald, you know, Villa Retirement Fund. There we go, $598. Splendid stuff. There we go. Right, so that's Officer Gerald. Now sort of, you know, on our side for another another year or so. And let's just thank him as well. Let's be polite because that gets our, gets our opinions up by five, which is very handy. Okay, 
Right, that's all that sorted. Steve is making his way down here through Hewitt territory, which could be a bit dangerous for Steve. And um, Leonard is all the way down here now, which is no good. So, right, Penge covered, head back over in this direction. And we will wait and hope that your brother sort of comes up here somewhere. That would be really useful if he could do that. So let's have a quick check. And, ah, no, but we do have a new corner. 43 corners now. Very good indeed. Okay, we'll go and sort that out in a second. Hang on, clear all those. Right, where is, where is Leonard? Ah, right. Okay, he's down here. He is between two gangs, but we could possibly... I think we could get down there and then maybe scoot out in this direction or go out over there somewhere. In fact, if we need, really needed to, we could go and sort of you know, hide next to Officer Edith Rutowski, maybe. Okay, okay, that could be a plan. First things first, however, Steve, have a word with Marvin here. Um, okay, yeah, so let's just, uh, let's say, I need you to stop harassing businesses around here. I can't get any deals done with you around. I mean, it's a lie, it's a total lie. We deal with nobody around here, but, it's fine. So there we go. What are you going to do? I'm going to threaten you. Oh, crikey, you're a bit scary. Okie doke. There we go. I think, I really, really hope that completes one of our goals now. I think it should. I mean, I suppose we'll find out at the end of the year. Okay, right. That's good. And then pop over to here. Oh, Steve, did we give you some money, Steve? No, <laughs> we forgot to give Steve any money. Okay. Okay. Steve's just checking in. He's just checking in. Hang on. Hang on, they have got favours. I mean, okay, did we look at this before? Um, buying what I've got or selling what I need. Has homemade beer operation going? Perhaps you could use assistance. Meet Daniel. Daniel's over there and he wants to buy beer. Do you know what? No, we're not interested. It's good to know. It's handy to know, but uh, but no, it's it's no use for us, really. We've got plenty of people who want to buy the beer. It's the making of the things that's a problem. Um, and um, Steve, do you know what? For now, you can wait just there. <laughs> you stay there, Steve. I mean, you know, is there a bank nearby? I don't think there are any banks nearby, Steve. You're going to have to drive all the way back over here to pick up some money, then drive all the way back over there to buy the neutral alcohol. But there we go. That's fine. Sorry, Steve. Right, here we go. So Penge covered all the way over there. Can you get down here? That is 18 of your 22 movement points. This is risky. This is quite risky. I mean, if everything goes wrong, he could go and stand next to Steve because Steve is quite good at fighting. Hello, brother. Hello, dearest brother. How are you? Um, hey, I think I heard about you. I would like to think so, given that we're related. You're my younger brother. I think, hang on, yeah, we're, are we 30, did I see? I think we're 30 and he's 25. So yeah, you're our younger brother. And um, what's happening? I've tolerated your presence long enough and I'll see you. That's it. That's all we have. We have no other options at all. We can't do anything. Um, yeah, the Hewitts don't like us. They're not overly furious with us, but they don't like us. So, um, yeah, we can't do anything with this. We can't do anything with poor Leonard. We're just going to have to... Yeah, I've tolerated your presence long enough. Is just fighting. And he just laughs at us because he knows what we're like. <laughs> In fact, what are you like? You are kind, compassionate and forgiving. Oh, you're the kind of person that we want on board. You sound amazing. Ooh, will not attack. Okay. Okay, this is interesting. Kind, compassionate, and forgiving. But yeah, he's not going to attack. Oh. Okay, that, I mean, that's quite interesting. At least he's not going to fight us. So we're not fighting all of the people in the Hewitt outfit. Because Leonard doesn't want to go and do that kind of thing. Uh, okay, right. That's interesting. But yes, it's all for nothing. Because Leonard just, yeah, there's no talking at all. There's nothing. We can't say anything to Leonard. I mean, can we chat to the leader? And chatting to the leader just comes up with i don't like you let's have a big old fight um yeah okay okay that's fine it, it looks like we're just gonna have to have a great big fight i do apologize oh and hang on and we can't get out of that screen so penge cupboard come down here and just you know hang out next to steve because steve can keep you safe just in case they get any ideas i think leonard just sort of drove by us just as a sort of uh you know a bit of a warning kind of you know warning shot type thing aha right um, and Dobby has leveled up. Oh, this is wonderful. Um, increase daily take or make you better at managing stuff. I mean, increase the daily take. Might as well get that up to level two. So both production manager and speakeasy manager are on level two, I guess. Yeah, okay. We'll have a point of that. Thank you very much. Right, okay. Steve, can you please <laughs> make your way back home? 
Oh, he's going to take like another month for him to drive across town to get money and then come back. Actually, do you know what? Penge Cupboard. Penge Cupboard, you're right here. Just buy the stuff right now. It's fine. Neutral alcohol. We will pick up 14 lots of it. Thank you so much. And um, right, we'll be off. Now, I don't think we'll be able to get back to the moonshine place, but we're not far off. We are not far off. So, OK, right. We will head back in that direction. Uh, let's pop on to the next turn. And again, you're going to see us flying through the turns quite quickly because I think we are you know, running the risk of our save game becoming very, very old and outdated and no longer being compatible with the latest versions of the game, even if we roll back, even if we roll back because they're updating the game all the time. So we do need to sort of you know, get a wriggle on a bit. So here we go. At long last, neutral alcohol is in there. 20 lots of it. That means they can make another 75 lots of lovely moonshine. And then that's kind of it again, because I don't quite know where the moonshine's going to come from. Uh, sorry, the neutral alcohol is going to come from. Okay, okay, never mind, never mind. And now, when do we want to go and have a bit of a fight? I am thinking that maybe we're going to have a bit of a fight very, very soon indeed. We need to make sure that everyone's kind of finished their runs and they can just all sit and wait. So let's have a quick check. So uh, Dale definitely has not, because Dale's got loads of stuff. Um, Harry. Harry has finished his run. So Harry, you stop your delivery. So stop your route, Harry. And um, you can then come over here. We're just going to amass over here, I think. If we all just go over there, that's going to be fine. Right, Frowny Face. I think Frowny Face does need to come along because he does love, he does love a little bit of the shooting and the violence. But who's going to support the front? Unless... Unless, just temporarily, we put we put um, Penge Cupboard on the whole sort of uh, front support run. Just let him go and do that. That would work. And then we just look after the people that are going to get involved in the whole sort of fighting side of things. And do you know what, Steve? Head over in this direction. You might as well go over there, Steve. Okay, so that's you two sorted. Okay, so frowny face. Um, yes, we need you to stop your route. Wherever you might be. Where are you, frowny face? Whereabouts are you? Hang on. Hang on, I'll try and work out where he is. Um, there he is, right. He's over here. So I assume, yeah, does this thing tell us where he is? Yeah, he's there. Wilkinson's car sales. Okay, so he's picking up stuff from there. Um, yeah, we'll stop you doing that for now. And then frowny face, make your way over here, please. Um, Ron. Can Ron fight? I don't know if Ron can fight. I don't know if Ron is made for fighting. He's only got a little pistol. So I would assume that he's not. He's talkative and friendly. No, I don't think Ron is... Ron's not made for fighting. Talkative, friendly and upright. Um, he is friendly, mellow and irreverent. And Eugene is quiet and sharp-eyed. But yeah, Dale. Dale's, Dale likes a bit of a fight. He's irritable and strong. So he could be quite useful. We just have to make sure that we keep everybody alive as well. Um, okay, so there'll be four people. We'll have... Frowny Face, uh, Harry, Dale, and Steve going out for a bit of a fight. Uh, which does mean that Penge Cupboard now needs to uh, take on a delivery route. Um, okay, right. Hang on a minute. Hang on. Uh, can we... How do we change the delivery route thing? How do we change who's on it? Um, which one is it? It's Frowny Faces. Yeah, here we go. This is how we change it. So it's no longer... It's no longer frowny face. It's Penge Cupboard. Okay. A bit of a change of things here. There we go. So Penge Cupboard on front assistance. So yes, proceed again, please. There we go. And then, yeah, frowny face is now up here as one of the muscle team, which is exciting. Okay. Okay. And then we just need to wait for Dale. We just need to wait for Dale to finish his kind of his run. And it'll all be fine. There we go. I think, I think he's pretty much done. He's only got some crocs and some... Oh, he's got quite a bit of malt syrup in there, though, hasn't he? He's got quite a bit of malt syrup in there. Um, okay, Dale, can you drop off the malt syrup, drop off the crocs, finish that, thank you very much, and then you can stop doing that thing, and then you can make your way all the way over here to where the party is happening, and somebody's levelled up as well. It's Grace! Oh, wonderful. Grace at the moonshine place. Not too much to do recently. Um, yeah, let's get... Let's see, reducing the amount of time needed, that's a little bit pointless because we're struggling for the raw ingredients anyway. 
Um, increase the amount of moonshine, could be handy, or increase performance of any business. Now, I like this. I like the generic one, but that could be very handy. If we're making more moonshine from the same batch of materials, that's got to be a good thing. Do you know what? Yeah, we'll take that, please. We shall have a bit of that. Thank you very much. Right. Here goes then. So move time on again. Oh, crikey. And Grace, <laughs> who's working over at the moonshine place, um, has now got a nickname and they want to call her Scarface. I mean, what happens if you call somebody Scarface? Does it keep suggesting Scarface? Or does it pick a different kind of gangstery, scary sounding name? Um, okay, no, we're not going to have Scarface. So because her name is Grace, I think her nickname should be Amazing. So therefore people can call her Amazing Grace. So there we go. We have Amazing Grace. And I realise that's not very original. And I apologise if you are called Grace and you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh my goodness me, that is an awful pun. I've heard that 10,000 times. I do apologise. But there we go. So, Grace, amazing Lewandowski, so amazing Grace, absolutely, there we go, wonderful stuff. Right, is everybody over here? Is everybody here? Or are people driving? So, frowny face is there. Steve is, where is Steve? Steve, whereabouts are you? You are all the way over, no, that's, no, that's not Steve. No, where's St Steve? Oh, Steve's under here, oh crikey, there's a, there's a great big gaggle of people. There's Steve. Steve, I thought I told you to come over here, Steve. Thought I said specifically drive over here. Oh, oh, hang on, hang on a second. Now we might have missed the boat with Steve there, but there's a chappy here. Willie Kramer is from the Hewitt outfit. He's not in their turf. He's wandering around over there, not in their turf at all. I think this is a perfect opportunity to go and take out one of their people nice and quickly. Here we go. And in the meantime, Penge Cupboard is completely oblivious to this. He just thinks that uh, Frowny Face has had some time off to, you know, maybe go on holiday somewhere. He's taking a nice trip. He's going over to, I don't know, where do you go on holiday from Chicago? I've got no idea. A lovely holiday destination. He's going to the lakes or something. And it's all very nice. He thinks, oh yeah, he's just taking some time off. Don't you worry. Don't you worry, Frowny Face. You go and have some fun. Maybe try and get the frown off your face for a bit. And I'll look after your route for you. Don't you worry. And meanwhile, everyone else is over here going, quickly, let's have a fight. Okay. Um, yeah. Harry, why don't we go and do this then? So here we go. Harry can go over to Willie and say, nope, I've tolerated your presence long enough. We're going to attack immediately. I suspect maybe Willie Kramer might die a bit. However, he does have a variety of scary sounding weapons. He does have a Thompson submachine gun, a Winchester rifle and bare fists. Now, the only thing is we don't really know. Oh, it says there, actually. It says there. He can only use one weapon, of course, I think. He could cause, in theory, 100 damage. Minimum 60, maximum 100. Of course, if we take 100, we are going to be dead. Please nobody die. Please nobody die. Here we go. Here we go. So we've all got Winchesters. So he's going to be dead. He's going to be dead because we're all going to cause at least, what, 55 damage. And there's three of us. So he's going to die. It's whether he takes one of us out. Here we go, please don't kill us, and... Okay, so he's not well, and... Okay, so he's dead, and... Oh my goodness me, Dale took 70, Harry took 70, and... Oh, oh, hang on, I've only got two people on the list! Oh no, oh no, <laughs> has one of our people died? Uh, nope, Steve's... Steve's still there. Uh, oh no, where's Frowny Face? <gasps> Frowny Face! I think Frowny Face might have died. Oh, no. Frowny Face is there. Frowny Face is up here. And there's the beer guy. And there's... There's Harry. So they're all there. They're just... Some of them are a bit hurt. Frowny Face isn't hurt at all. <laughs> He's absolutely fine. However, these two are a little bit worse for wear. Right, where's our nearest kind of safe house? Oh, it is some way off, isn't it? Oh, crikeys. Um... Yeah, they're going to have to go all the way back over here. But at least one of their people is now dealt with. So you go over there. I know you've got insufficient movement points. I'm aware of this. It's all fine. Right. Okay. But one of their people is dead. And um, yeah, can we can we have a look in the vehicle? Frowny face. Go and have a look. $333. Very nice indeed. And then frowny face. Maybe just you know, pop back over here. So you're not involved in that at all. You can go, oh my goodness me, but well, I have nothing to do with me. My goodness, how bizarre. Okay, right. So that's um, that's not great. Someone's left a dead fish wrapped in a newspaper. Yeah, okay, that's fine. We just met Vogel's crew. 
Okay, that's nice, I suppose. Met some troublemakers, met some new police officers, and the Hewitts are now a bit angry at us. I think I can work out why. Right, you need to get back over here to heal up, as does uh, Dale, because Dale is also a little bit on the hurt side. So, okay, here we go. Heal up at a safe house. Wonderful stuff. And Dale as well. You heal up. Okay, good. So next turn, I think they'll all be back again. There we go. That car's vanished. Uh, right, some of our fronts need immediate attention, I assume, because, um, yeah, Penge Cupboard is trying to get round to them as quick as he can. I mean, there he is. Which ones need immediate attention? I think, I think he has just dealt with them. Game, I think we're fine. Yeah, they've both been dealt with. Okay, um, that stalled. Oh, crikey's okay. <laughs> that stalled due to a lack of crocs. But we do have Croc Delivery Man on the way, so that might help out a bit. Um, and that has stopped. Um, uh, hang on, what? That's still due to a lack of a lack of produce, I would imagine. Yeah, there's nothing for anybody to drink in Robert's Candies, so that's disappointing. And then the beer place has stopped just because it always does, because it requires a lot of things very, very quickly. Um, yeah. Okay. Although. Although Bill does have 100 homemade beer in there. And there's 75 homemade beer there as well. So we're okay, I think. But we do need to do, when all this fighting is done, when the war is over, we do need to go and sort some things out. But okay, okay. Right now, are you two okay? Yes, they are fully healed once again. Okay. Ah, yes, of course. I've just realised something. So both our speakeasy and the bootlegging place are not going to be getting their regular deliveries of booze because, of course, all our delivery people are over here doing some kind of fighty stuff. So, okay, that would make sense. Right, we need to kind of get this done as quick as possible. Although it is looking quite difficult because we do have a police officer down here. Officer Wallace Richardson is over there causing us some problems. Okay. Okay, this is fine. Right, go to next turn. Go to next turn. Let's see what happens now. So, where is Officer Wallace? He's gone over there. However, we can't get in over here anywhere. We can't get in over here. That's the Hewitt Outfit base, which is right next door to the place which sells the neutral alcohol that we're interested in. Oh, good. Um, maybe could we all make our way in and kind of head over in that direction and take out a couple of people over there? That would be quite good. Can we all make it to here? Come on, we've got to make it into here, but we need to work as a team. Go, go team. Um, Hang on, Steve. Yes, you can make it down here, but yeah, you can't make it into the next thing. Okay, right, this is fine. This is fine, it's all fine. Um, Okay, yep, they still want to talk to us. An offer made you no longer stands. Okay, right, fine, sorry. This is causing us all sorts of problems, <laughs> but these people do need to be taken care of. However, they are all sort of moving away from us now. I think they might have you know, picked up the threat. Oh, I see. Right, okay. So the ones with the orange circle in their character portrait, I think they are now our rivals. Because these folks here, they don't have an orange circle thing in their portrait, but they're the diamond outfits. We don't really care about them. I don't think we've really interacted with them very much. But yes, of course, we just made rivals of the Hewitts, and they have this kind of orange circle thing. Okay, okay, right. So we need to make slow but steady progress over in this direction. Uh, do you know what? Let's reveal. It doesn't really matter. Just somebody reveal these things. There we go. Oh, look. A nice place. Adams and Red Ash Lumber. Sounds very nice. Um, you can uncover that as well. A new furniture place. It's a furniture place. Oh, wonderful stuff. Right, okay. So, now go to the next turn. We're all together, so we should be okay if it comes to a fight. Ah, right. Can we get down here? Can we go and have a chat with June? No, we cannot. And they're all kind of bunching up up there. Okay, this is getting very tricky. Also, this is going to be hitting us in our pockets. So the money's okay. The money's okay. We have $197,000. So I'm not so bothered. But of course, we're not going to be producing all the alcohol now and selling it to people. So we might lose our sort of first places on the end of year sort of leaderboards for those particular things. But okay, it's all fine. It's all fine. So come down here. Let's reveal that building as well. There we go. It's a hardware store. Lovely, lovely. Right. Here we go. Now, who's that there? Hang on. Come out of that. That's Lillian. That's Leonard. That's Maxine. So she's in charge up there. We couldn't get down there. Right. Okay. What are they going to do? Are they going to come and attack us? No, they are not. In fact, lots of their people have just ran away. <laughs> 
You're making this very difficult, you lot. Right, okay. Here we go, here we go. Right, drive up there. Um, somebody's leveled up. Eugene's leveled up. Oh, well done, Eugene. Okay, do you know what, Eugene? You've got two sort of, uh, you've got to level two in Efficient Driver. Let's give you, let's get you to level one in Smart Opportunist. Have a few more extra action points. There we go. Lovely, lovely. Right, okay. So what's going on over here? Hang on, where is everybody? Where are all our people? Um, can we move? There's two people there, though. Leonard and Maxine, who is the boss. But yeah, Maxine seems to have a sort of second in command, possibly Leonard with her at all times. We could do with we could do with one of them going away. I mean, we don't really want to take out Leonard. I feel bad taking out Leonard, but he's not talking. He is refusing to talk, so I don't think we have any other option. But if we all pile in, somebody's going to get killed. One of our people, I mean. I don't want our people to get killed. One of those can get killed. That's fine. Do you know what? Go to the next turn. Uh, Eugene has got... Eugene has got a nickname. They want to call Eugene Scarface. Um, no, no, that, that's not going to do at all. Let's give him the nickname of Eugene Face because it's absolutely 100% accurate. So there you go. Eugene can now be known as Eugene Face. Wonderful stuff. Right, okay, somebody's leveled up. John the Johnster has leveled up. Um, okay, okay, what do we want you to be good at? I mean, you've got Efficient Driver up to level two. Smart Opportunist is on level one. So I think, yeah, maybe let's get those both up to level two. That makes a bit of sense, doesn't it? So there we go. Right, back we go to um to the combat zone. All sorts of problems over there with the whole sort of legitimate operation stuff. It's all going a bit wobbly. Does that place produce something? No. Somewhere does. Doesn't somewhere produce a place? Ah, yes, over here. We're just producing loads and loads of small barrels. Um, Okay, I mean, we don't need to produce that many barrels. Let's get rid of... I don't know, 25 of them for the sake of it. There we go, we're down to 40, wonderful. Right, okay, how are we doing? Right, they're all gathering. We're kind of set for a bit of a showdown. Lillian, I notice, is a tiny bit injured. Lillian is a bit hurt. I wonder, oh, now, now, do we take the risk? Do we take the risk and run our people in over here? Because I think we can all get there. We can all get there, yes. Have a fight, because then Lillian might go down quite easy. And then we have to deal with whoever that other one is. Hang on, hang on. No, away with you. No, don't, not, don't move anywhere. There we go. June. He's got Lillian and June. It's a risk. It is a big, big risk if we go and do that. But I think if we can take down Lillian quite easily, I then think we could get June as well. Okay, do you know what? Let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. I am kind of expecting one of our people to fall here. I'm expecting one of our people to not make it out, but they're fine with this. They're absolutely fine. They're all okay. Um, okay. Hello, Lillian. How are you? My name is Harry, and I'm very, very cross. Um, yeah, they don't like us at all. They're angry at us. We've tolerated your presence long enough. We're going to have a fight. Okay, now, she is injured. Okay, that's good. However, she also does have the Thompson submachine gun, does June. Um, and Lillian has got the... She's got both as well. Oh my goodness me, they're very well armed, aren't they? Okay, right, so here we go. So Dale, I don't know who goes first in sort of us or them, I'm not sure. So Dale, take out Lillian. Take out Lillian. So Dale can shoot at Lillian, and Lillian is injured. So I think she'll go. I think she'll go. And then, oh, how injured is she though? How injured is she? Do we want, maybe Frowny Face should go for Lillian to make sure that she goes out, and then the others all fire at June. Let's do that. So June, June, then Frowny Face, you take out Lillian, but you go first. So you're going to cause at least 67 points of damage, which I think will take her out. And then you have a go at June, and you have a go at June, and you have a go at June. <laughs> it's going to be a bad time, June. Um, okay, here we go. Fingers crossed that all of our people make it out alive, although I am you know, partly expecting losses here. But here we go. Here we go. Hopefully not. And fight. And there's deadness. Okay. Uh, Frowny Face is injured. Dale is incapacitated. Harry is incapacitated. I think we have made it out alive. The only thing is, now our people are all injured. And Leonard and Maxine here might get a bit fighty. Also, some of our vehicles are looking a bit banged up. That's fine. That's fine game. It doesn't matter. Dale. Dale is hanging on by a red oh my goodness me and we can't move oh okay right 
this could be bad. Um, let's, I don't know, uh, Steve, you have a look in there. So, okay, machine gun things, very nice. And um, Steve, have a look in there and more weaponry. Okay. <laughs> okay, Steve, would you perhaps like to... I oh, know you've got... Yeah, you've picked up the, the Thompson submachine guns. So Steve can defend people because Steve is okay. Harry is in a bad way. Frowny face is quite poorly. And Dale is really, really clinging on. Dale needs, uh, he needs a good cup of tea, does Dale. Okay, now here we go. This is going to be very interesting because if they decide to attack us, I suspect it's going to be over for two of our people. Steve can probably fight back and cause them a bit of damage. But I think, yes, if they do choose to attack us, it's going to be all over for two of our people. Hopefully, hopefully we're doing a good job of hurting them and they're kind of a bit scared right now. Okay, here goes everybody next turn. And okay, right. Leonard's gone away. Leonard's driven off over in that direction. And Maxine has not done anything at all. Right, how far can we get out of here? <laughs> can we get out? Uh, well, yeah, Frowny Face has got a great big range on him, hasn't he? He can go 17. Steve, you need to stick with Steve, I'm afraid. Um, yeah, can we get... Oh, we can only get over there. <laughs> oh, no. Right, we need people to heal up. But people are very, very badly hurt. So here we go. Here we go. Let's just get everybody over to here for now. All stick together. Do not leave anybody behind, because that would be bad. Right, here we go. And... Okay, on to the next turn. Please don't kill us. Please don't kill us. Please don't kill us. Ooh. <laughs> I thought Maxine was coming in to finish one of us off. Okay, right. Now can we get over to... I'm a bit lost when I have it this way around. Can we get over to there? No. We still can't get over to our place over here. I think that is the nearest building, isn't it? Or is it down here, possibly? At the speakeasy. 1750. Right, it's over there. It's over there. Okay, right. Everybody, head over in that direction now. I think we're okay to head over there because that puts us sort of over into our own turf. Uh, yeah, hang on. Frowny face. Why are you not moving, my good sir? Get, o get over there. Yes, get moving, man. <laughs> Don't stay there. That would be a terrible idea. Okay. Right, so they are three people down. Oh, frowny face, you're right there. You can, um, hang on, where are you? You can heal up right now. Splendid. Okay, right. On to the next turn. Time is absolutely flying by. You know, we're having a great big fight. It's certainly certainly taking its toll on everyone. Um, okay, right. So, frowny face recuperating. Steve is absolutely fine. Um, yeah, you, uh, Dale, recover. And Harry, recover. And now we just move it on to the next turn. This is hitting all of our things. It's hitting all of our profits, all of our production, everything. But we need to do it. Uh, okay, right. Harry is on his way to recovery. So now let's head back over here again. Leonard's having a chat with the police. <laughs> but now I think, I think, hang on, hang on. Where's, there's only two. There's Maxine and Leonard. Oh dear. This puts us in a very interesting position, doesn't it? Right. Okay. So let's get everybody back over here then. So we've got insufficient movement points for everybody. Frowny face can't move. Steve can move. Steve moves quite slowly as well. So let's get Steve over here. He can get a bit of a head start. And uh, Dale is... Yeah, Dale's recovered. So Dale can make his way over here. But he's got no movement. Let's hang on. Let's just get everybody onto the next turn. Okay, this is all very good. So our four fighty people are now back together. They're all healed up, which is marvellous. And they are right on the edge of Hewitt territory. Look at that. They're right next to it. Occasionally, they're running over and they're putting their arm over the cut of the border and going, whoa, we're in your turf. And then they're running away again. Just, you know, to pass some time, I suppose. But I do notice that there are only two people left now. We've got Leonard and we have Maxine which means we do need to get on with this a little bit. We do need to do this quite quickly because otherwise, you know, if we leave it too long, they're going to recruit more people and then that's more people for us to go and fight and possibly get shot by. However, I do notice that Maxine has taken damage. She is on half health. That's nothing to do with us at all. That's nothing to do with us. I suspect it's to do with this chappy here. Leo Cadillac is on hardly any health at all. So I guess that the Diamond outfit and the Hewitt outfit are having a fight. They've got a little bit of a rivalry going on because they are very close. They're really, really close to each other. So I guess they are having a bit of a fight. And um, yeah, that's why Maxine has taken damage. Now, can we get down there? That is the only question. I don't think we can get in there to make the most of that. Can we get over... Oh, this is terrible. This is awful. I don't want to do this. 
I don't want to do this, but yeah, Leonard Cupboard. We might have to go and get you, Leonard. Uh, this is a bit of a shame. Can we get her? Frowny Face can get down there. Frowny Face could have a good, a good go at maybe taking her out on his own. Because I don't think we can get anybody else down there. Right, Frowny Face, you go. I don't, hang on, hang on, hang on. Can Dale get there? No, no, he can't. I thought he could, but he can get to just there. Okay, right, we might need to move some people over. Um, yeah, let's drive Harry down as well. <laughs> just to kind of go here. Yeah, this hasn't worked at all well, has it? Um, and you, do you know what? Steve, you go, oh, crikey, this is awful. Right, Steve, just go to there. And right, now they're all split up. This is terrible. Right, frowny face. Go to Maxine. Um, right, this is um, not what we want to do. So all this fighting is bad for business. Why don't we try something more profitable? We don't need profit. Got loads of profit. So here we go. I've tolerated your presence long enough. She is a bit hurt. So, okay, here we go. Fight time. She's injured. She is injured. She does have a chance of killing us, but we have a greater chance of killing her. So here we go. This is the showdown. Is, is Frowny Face going to make it out of this alive? I really hope so. I do hope so, because he's on full health. And her, you know, the maximum damage she can do is 100. So it'd be very unfortunate if he did go out. But she's injured. We're going to call 67 at least to her. So here we go. It's fight time. Please stay alive, Frowny Face. And do we still have Frowny Face? He's injured. 69 damage, but he's okay. He's just a little bit hurt. Maxine, however is very, very much dead. Shocking violence targeting the Hewitt outfit. Um, yeah, okay, we better leave now. $293, okay, right. Frowny face, can you move? No, you can't. You're now stuck at the scene of the crime. Oh, good. <laughs> Are there any police around? Um, there's Officer Gerald over there, but he's fine. He's fine with us. He doesn't mind, you know, the sale of some illegal alcohol or as, you know, murdering people out in the streets. It's all fine. Officer Gerald and us go way back. It's all good. Okay. So now I think, hang on, this is going to result in something very exciting going, hang on. There we go. Leonard Cupboard has taken the reins of the Hewitt outfit. So now if we zoom out, we've got Cupboard and Cupboard. We've got the Cupboards with the Cupboards. However, it's still not good enough, is it? It's not right. Ooh. Hang on. Leonard's come over here for a bit of a fight, has he? Leonard has descended upon the, you know, the body of his former boss to maybe check things out and he's discovered that we're still here? Oh, right. Frowny face, you need to get out of there. You need to go and heal up, please, because you are a bit hurt. So you head off in that direction. That would be wonderful. Um, however, I think everyone else can come back in. Here we go. Right, now this... I don't really want to do this. I don't feel happy doing this. I'd let you all to know. I don't want to take out Leonard Cupboard, but I don't think we have a choice because he's going to operate this outfit here. He's still near to us. Then he's going to recruit more people. And, you know, it's just going to continue. No matter what the name, no matter who's in charge, there's still going to be an outfit over here, whether it's Leonard or somebody else, whoever. Somebody will take over the running of this and they're going to get in our way. So we do need them to be gone. I mean, Penge Cupboard is still happily driving about the place. He went to have a chat with his brother, and his brother didn't really respond. He was quite rude. He wasn't really sort of talkative or anything. So, you know, clearly there was no love lost between the two brothers, between the two Cupboard brothers. So, you know, maybe, maybe it's not such a bad thing. And I heard as well, I did hear, we've heard on the grapevine, we've now seen that, um, that Leonard Cupboard loves nothing more than drinking coffee. This is what we've happened across. We've learned this information. We've been watching him. We've seen him in his car as we've been sort of scoping out. He's been sipping a coffee and uh, somebody offered him a tea and uh, we even saw him take the tea and he threw it. He threw it across the street. It smashed into a wall. He wasted tea and then he actively chose to go and drink coffee. So, you know, Penge Cupboard knows nothing of what's going on here. But um, yeah, I think the actions of Dale and Harry and Steve here are going to be entirely justified. So, um, Leonard, Leonard, I do apologize. I mean, who's going to do this? Steve, you can have a chat. We have tolerated your presence long enough. Oh, Leonard. Leonard, I don't really want to fight. But here we go. Here we go. We're going to have to attack you, Leonard. Hopefully, all of our people will survive. I mean, if not, I guess, you know, it's the final act of Leonard Cupboard here. But um, but here we go. Right, so fight time, Leonard. I, I apologise. I apologise. Maybe, you know, if you'd have tried tea, you'd have enjoyed tea. Life would have been all very different indeed. But as it is... You sat in your vehicle, sipping at your coffee. We're going to have to take you out. I do apologise. 
because you know with coffee you can't buy a teapot you don't need a teapot with coffee and you know, where's the joy in life without some lovely teapots and some very lovely little sort of very fancy china teacups with sauces and such like so um so yes leonard i do apologize but you are going to go out will you take out one of our people let's press this button and find out i don't think so i don't think any of our people have gone because i think we would have a notification up there let's go and have a look we've got dale who is injured we've got harry who is injured and uh, yes so dale caused 59 damage which is only just above the only just above the minimum that he can cause um, and the rest of the damage was caused by harry and there we go i think that's it and here we go i mean that's a bit worrying <laughs> that's a bit worrying seeing that but we've had to take out the brother of our lead character um dale have a rummage around another machine gun another winchester um has anyone got oh hang on can we go over there right now I think, yeah, we're on that corner. We can go and see what is in their, in their sort of a safe house. I imagine quite a lot of nice stuff. Okay, Harry, you have a look in there. Um, okay, yeah, Harry can go in. They've been scared off. Lumber, brick wine, grape concentrate. Oh, that's going to be handy. And some hard cider. Okay, okay, there we go. Now, which is the place that sells the... Um, Where's the neutral alcohol place? I think that's it just there. Has anybody got any money on them? <laughs> Whilst they're here, does anybody have a slight bit of coin on them where they could go and pick up some stuff? Um, Harry. Harry does. Harry, can you move? You can't move down there right now. Okay, everyone's everyone's had a bit of a fight. Um, okay, on to the next turn. The cupboard outfit, the other cupboard outfit. The secondary not as good cupboard outfit. Eliminated by rivals. Gangland conflicts. Trouble the mayor. Okay, and there we go. They are gone. Okay, so that little bit down there is diamond territory. Okay, that's fine. But look at that. They're gone. They're no longer going to be a concern for us. And I think, I think I would be quite surprised, given that it's almost 1932. So there's about, well, a couple of years left in the game. I would be surprised if the diamonds got near to us to cause any trouble. I mean, how many of them are there? There's, there's quite a few of them. There's four of them. And it's taken us, what, half a year uh, oh no, there's six of them. Yeah, there's quite a lot of them. It's taken us a long time to take out the Hewitts and then obviously poor Leonard. So I don't think they're going to cause us any more issues. So I think now let's get everybody back home. Harry, pop over to here for a second. Um, Go into here. Um, oh no, he's injured and he can't work. Okay, do you know what? It's fine. Everyone just, um, yeah, everyone get back home. Everyone get back home. Everybody heal up, please. Well, everyone apart from Steve, because Steve doesn't need to heal up because he's absolutely fine. So do you know what, Steve? Pop over to the storehouse and let's put your fancy pants sort of Thompson submachine gun things over here. Let's put them in storage because they sound a little bit dangerous. So yeah, let's pop them in a nice cupboard with a lock on it. Oh yes, of course. Right. Happy New Year, everybody. It's now 1932, which is wonderful. Very good year. And this could be quite revealing, couldn't it? Because I think we will have acquired a couple more goals. We will have done the one with the gangs and we might well have done the one with taking out rival outfits. So we might have got two of those, but we may well have lost other things because we've not been producing alcohol we've not been selling it in the speakeasies all that kind of stuff so at the moment i don't quite know how this is going to go so let's go and have a look we've met six legacy goals currently we are going to be the stuff of legend however let's have a look at what we do have so here we go so total net worth number one that's fine um we've not got the corners i don't think we'll get that I don't think we will get to 30% of everything control. We're on 10 now. It's taken us long enough to get to 10. Um, we've got lots of captains. So those two are pretty much sorted. I think they're going to be absolutely fine. Um, here we go. Number of favours. That's three. Railroads and freight handler. Not got those sorted. Producer of alcohols. Yep, absolutely. We've still got that. So that's number one. And distributor to the people. That's still number one. Supplier to the stars. We need to work on that. I think that could be the final one to get us over the six and into the seventh goal. But that's quite handy. And then over here, ah, outfits eliminated 37%. We need 50%. Okay, so I think if we were to take out one more outfit, that would get that sorted. But we're okay for now, I think. And there we go. Neutralized hooligans, 50% neutralized, and we've got 50%. Splendid stuff. Okay, and we've got outfits with vendettas against us. Three. Okay. I mean, surely those three outfits are gone, are they not? I'm sure they've been eliminated. But okay, okay, that's absolutely fine. So uh, yeah, we're on six. I think we probably could get up to seven if we become an exclusive supplier to the fancy hotel. 
that would get us onto the seventh. I don't think we can do anything with railroads. Don't think we can do anything with the freight handling thing because they're not in our turf right now. Okay. Okay, wonderful stuff. And there we go. We've got quite a lot of sort of money behind us. $204,520. Exactly. No sense with that as a spot on. Okay. Well done, everybody. Well done. Right. So let's just drop off some things. So here we go. Steve. So you pop those, uh, you pop those Thompson submachine guns and a billy club and two Winchester rifles into there. Do you know what? Let's just put Steve in the middle somewhere. We'll park him over there. He can go. Do you know what? No, he needs to go to a place where he can have some fun. Maybe go over to, yeah, go to here, look. Go to here, Steve, because then you'll be next to the bowling alley. So you can go and do some bowling in your spare time. There we go. All right, and everybody else over here, you all need to heal up. So please get better and please don't die. And Harry, please do not die. And I think that's it. I think everybody has healed up. I mean, this corner is very, very busy. All of a sudden, there are lots of people on this corner, but I think our main people have healed up. I mean, yeah, Dale's car is a bit broken. Harry's car is looking a little bit worse for wear. I guess because it's full of bullet holes or something. I don't really know. So let's get them back on their routes. You go and do your route, which includes you repairing your vehicle. You go and do your route. That's all very good indeed. And then what we need to do is, where is, where's Penge Cupboard? Penge Cupboard. There you go. Right, so you now don't need to do this because now Frowny Face can get back onto his support route. Okay, there we go. And I think that's everyone back doing stuff. So he'll repair his car, he'll repair his car, he'll repair his car. Uh, everything else is looking fine. Steve's kind of positioned to do some bowling. Okay, okay, here we go. Oh no, hang on. Hang on, no, 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 not quite yet. Hang on, Harry's got a massive load of stuff in his vehicle. Hasn't? Nope, Harry, hang on. Sorry for messing you around, Harry. Um, can you, I mean, what have we got? We've got Winchester, Lumber, Brick Wine, Grape Concentrate, and Hard Cider. Okay, I mean, the first thing you can do, uh, Harry, is pop that Grape Concentrate right into there because they need that to do stuff. So, okay, Grape Concentrate, fine. Crocs, bit of a problem, but they're getting there. Slowly but surely, they're getting there. Um, okay, right, and now, Harry, if you could drive down to... Where do you want you to go? Ah, pop over here to storage. Put the lumber into storage because that might come in useful at some point in the future. So one, two, three, and four. And then brick wine and the hard cider. What do they want here? What do they drink here? That's beer and, ah yeah, that's that's hard cider. But I think, it, have we only got one hard cider? <laughs> that might be a bit pointless, popping into the pub for a pint. And literally that's what they have. They have one pint. Um, they want, uh, yeah, they've got beer, but they want, yeah, they want brick wine and hard cider. Yeah, okay. We'll pop it over to there, I think. Put it into the speakeasy, makes sense. Also, it's just down the street, which is very straightforward. So, okie doke. Pop the one hard cider in. Pop the brick wine in. Finish that. Okay. So now, this place can sell lovely brick wine. It can sell beer. It can sell hard cider. Everything is looking marvellous once again. Right, and now, Harry, absolutely. Right, you can now really actually get on with doing what you were doing. Because I think everything is looking good with what you're carrying. We do have Dale, actually. Dale has picked up a few extra bits and bobs. I think that'll be fine. I think that will be fine. Surely those guns and such don't weigh that much. I would not have thought. Where are you, Dale? Uh, if we pop into here, just do that. What's Dale's carry capacity? 2%. Do you know what? That's fine. I mean, we're here. Why don't we just go bop and bop like that? There we go. That will do. He's not carrying those things around anymore. And I think now, if we move everyone on, is everyone going to go and get on with their jobs? Yes, they are. And Penge Cupboard is over here. None the wiser. He's kind of gone, looked over here and read the papers and gone, oh, oh, my brother's left, has he? Oh, that's interesting. My goodness me. Well, that's good. I didn't really want to speak to him. Anyway, what a, what a wally he was, said Penge Cupboard. Um, but there we go. So he's quite happily now just going to go and drink some more tea and just have a lovely bit of time off because he has been quite busy has Penge Cupboard dealing with fronts and whatnot. So yeah, now he gets a bit of a rest. And cheerful Chester over at the Speakeasy has leveled up once again. I think let's increase his Speakeasy manager skill up to level two. I quite like that. Increase the daily take from our joint because I'm not entirely convinced that we can have another expansion slot. I think three is the maximum you can have. So I don't know if that's going to just be a wasted thing. So yeah, let's increase the daily take. Why not? And that will be quite busy. That will be quite busy right now because, you know, there's actually some stuff to sell, which is quite good. Last turn, they sold 42 crocs of beer and 21 crocs of wine. 
So, you know, pretty good going in there. That's a lot of stuff being sold. So, okay, wonderful stuff. And yeah, it looks like everybody is now just getting on with stuff again. Everyone's getting on with stuff. I'm just keeping an eye on these vehicles just to make sure they don't completely and utterly fall apart. And um, I'd like Frowny Face to do a complete round of kind of front support just to make sure that nothing's going to go a little bit wobbly with the fronts. And if it does look like things are going to go wrong, then we can get Penge Cupboard to run in and help out. And there we go. Dale's vehicle has been repaired and Harry's vehicle has been repaired as well. So now we're just waiting for Frowny Face to get his vehicle fixed up. And there we go. That was quick. Wow. Well done, everybody. Right. So all vehicles repaired. And ah, yes, right. Hang on. So now, now we can control Penge Cupboard again. Let's go up and see Edwin because we haven't gone to talk to Edwin for a good long while. We've kind of driven past. I'd like to think that maybe as we've driven by, we've given him a friendly wave or whatever. But hello, Edwin. How are you? You don't like us anymore. Okay. Got any leads on any interesting goods or products? Um, yep, yeah, okay, we'll give you some money right now. We get baseball bats later. Right, now you like us a bit, which is a bit better. So that's quite nice. Um, and then got anything for me? Uh, counterfeit wine. A gift. Okay, yes. Six counterfeit wine. I mean, it's not loads, but it's better than nothing. It's absolutely better than nothing. I mean, what does the... Does the speakeasy want counterfeit wine? No, it does not. Uh, okay, who would like to buy some counterfeit wine? There's some lovely counterfeit wine going. Um, some people over here. Do you know what? Why not? Let's pop down here and sell this stuff to them. And yes, there we go. We've got six lots of it. Enjoy. Absolutely. $201. Very, very nice indeed. And Eugene Face has leveled up once again. Well done, Eugene Face. I think let's get your efficient driver skill up to level three. So you get lots of movement points because you do have to move quite a long way. You do have quite a long distance to cover on your route. So absolutely, you drive around a little bit further, which is wonderful. And I was just thinking, hang on, Penge Cupboard. Right, hang on a second, hang on. If we go down to here and yeah, neutral alcohol. We can now go down here and pick some up and then we can go over there and pick some up and possibly stop by lots of places over here as well and grab some Crocs because they could also help quite a bit. Okay. Okay, this is going to be very good. Right, Penge Cupboard, you need to make sure you've got a great big arm full of cash. How much have you got? 421. I'm not entirely sure that's going to cut it. I don't think that's going to cut it right now. So grab some more from here. There must be a bit in there. Yeah, yeah there's $12,000. I'm sure that's fine. I think if we take almost $1,500, I think we can buy some stuff. So here we go. So hang on, put the thing back on. So where do we need to go first? I think we head all the way down here. And uh, yeah, Penge Cupboard can get down there because he is very, very good at driving. He can go long distances. He drives very slowly, does Penge Cupboard. He's very much a sort of, you know, a Sunday afternoon driver, just having a little leisurely drive around. Come on, Penge Cupboard. <laughs> Put your foot down. You're a gangster. You're not driving Miss Daisy around. Okay, there we go. There we go. Right, so buying and selling, neutral alcohol. We'll pick up 10 lots of that. Thank you very much. And I imagine we have got quite a lot of space left to um, to actually you know, pick up some more stuff. So here we go. What do you sell? Because I don't think we've ever popped round here, have we? Um, okay, Crocs. Yeah, I'll pick them up now. 30 of them. Beautiful. That will help a great deal. And what about here? Do you sell anything? Apple juice. Do you know what? Whilst we're here, we will pick up... Ooh, okay. Do you know what? Let's stock up on what we can get. 12 of them. 12 barrels of that. Okay, that's fine. That's all good. Uh, right, so go to the next turn. Uh, yep, okie doke. Right, and now, yeah, because look, we are struggling. We've got lots of problems going on. Uh, Penge Cupboard, get back over here, please. So drop off apple juice over here and then drop off uh, sort of a neutral alcohol stuff over there. Okay, we don't really need apple juice. We have got quite a lot of apple juice right there. Plus, there appears to be 312 crocks of hard cider sitting in there. Okay, why is that? That's quite a lot. It's just been building up. I assume it's just been building up and up and up whilst Harry was out and about doing a little bit of, you know, casual violence. Um, maybe what we could do is let's grab as much of that as we can. So 49 crocs of that. Um, Penge Cupboard has got no movement points left. Okay, it's all fine. It's all fine. Right, so Penge Cupboard, pop over to here. In fact, no, pop over to here drop off that into Robert's Candies because I think Robert's Candies is looking, yeah, it's looking a little bit bereft of stuff to sell. So there we go. That's all very handy. Um, and then, yeah, now we'll go to the Moonshine place and drop off 
the um, the neutral alcohol, and also the crocs as well. Uh, oh no, they've got 242 crocs. <laughs> I think maybe, I think perhaps we could take some of those crocs and put them somewhere else. Okay, right. Who is looking a little bit shy of crocs? Anybody? Okay, the cider place doesn't have many, but they're near to a production run. They've got 27, they need 41. So we could drop off a handful in the cider place and then maybe some over at the beer place just to try and keep things ticking over. So hang on, let's make sure they've got whatever it is, 45 or something like that. That'll do. So that should keep them going. Yes, they can now get another run in, which is marvellous. Okay, now over here, I imagine that they've not got any crocs and there is a 56. They've got 42. Okay, do you know what? Worry not, penge cupboard to the rescue. Here we go. Let us put in some of those. Uh, have up to 60. That's fine. There you go. Wonderful stuff. So the moonshine sorted, cider sorted, beer sorted. Uh, okay, hang on. How about this over here? They need crocs as well. Okay, okay, right, I see. Crocs are still the issue. Crocs are still the problem. Right, Penge Cupboard, get over here, please. Drop off crocs over there. That should keep things ticking over quite nicely at suds and such for a while. What do they need? 52. So if we throw that in, that's 82. Okay, so they can get another run in. And there is some brick wine in there. Uh, hang on, hang on. We need that for one of our missions. Okay, do you know what? Let's pill for that whilst it's there. We shall have that. Thank you very much. Yoink. Take 89 lots of that. And we'll drop that off. Where was that? All the way down there. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. We'll make our way down here and drop that off. I think we do need to go to the next turn, but that's fine. Police are doing a thing. Um, and over to finish delivery at Cafe Taurus as part of Crocs for All. Police presence on this corner is making the owner nervous. Uh, oh! It's over there. Oh, have we got to go and pay off Officer Edith now? We might possibly have to. Uh, okay, that's fine. Right, hello. Right, we've got some of the stuff you wanted. 89 crocs of brick wine. We'll be back with the rest. Please hold the line because, yeah, it's quite tricky. And one of our vehicles is getting a bit banged up. Um, Bill, I'm pretty sure Bill will repair that at some point soon. Okay, Penge Cupboard is making his way over here to have a chat with lovely police officer Edith because we like our police force, they're all very good and they do a wonderful job. So, hello officer Edith, how are you? I'm Penge Cupboard, um, you're great you are. Right, can we please have a little chat? No, they don't trust us enough. Okay, who does she like? Who does she know that we know that we could then call in a bit of a favour to try and get her, you know, our reputation up with her? Absolutely nobody. She knows quite a few of the uh, rival gang over there, and she knows some of the gangs down here, but she doesn't have any interactions at all with our people. Or with anyone else, in fact. Oh, okay, that's a bit unfortunate, isn't it? They're not shared connections, just all connections. Yeah, that doesn't help, does it? Okay, Penge Cupboard, don't stand around there because she might possibly take all your stuff off you and that's quite a lot of money. So you just sort of, I don't know, potter off in this direction somewhere. Can you pick up some crocs while you're out and about? Um, yeah, can you go over there, Penge Cupboard? Pop down here, you can't make it there. Okay, do you know what? Head sort of in that direction anyway and pick up some crocs and just go and help out because yeah, we need all the crocs in the world. And a quick chat with Edwin just to come and pick up our baseball bats, was it? Yes, there we go. Right, yep, yeah, lovely. We love a game of baseball. Pop them over into the storage thing with the other 300,000 baseball bats and crowbars we bought off you. But there you go, that's lovely. Um, do you have anything for us? Um, some steel barrels. Oh good, don't mind if I do. Five lovely shiny steel barrels are now ours. I mean, I suppose it's better than nothing. I shouldn't be ungrateful, but I mean, you know, that that's okay. That's okay. It's fine. I'm not being ungrateful. It's lovely. Thank you for the nice, generous gift, Edwin. Okay, steel barrels dropped off into storage. Wonderful stuff. We still do have all of this gin in here and some brandy and a load of whiskey and probably other stuff as well. Sparkling cider. Got some of that just lying around the place. So, okay, right. I do know they're there. I remember they're there. I don't really think... I mean, people in the comments keep saying, you need to sell those. I don't really think we need to sell them. I mean, yes, okay, we probably should sell them. I don't think we need to sell them because we have got quite a lot of money. $216,000 to our name. So we are quite rich. So I don't really think we need to sell the stuff. Although yes, we probably will at some point. But I think what we'll do is we will finish up for now because we have done very, very well this time. It's been very tricky because of course we had to say farewell to the brother 
of our lead character, who is entirely oblivious to the fact that some of his crew went and took out his brother. He thinks his brother's just, you know, gone away for a bit now, and that Frowny Face was having a nice holiday, rather than, you know, getting involved in all sorts of shootouts and fights and things. But, uh, but there we go. There we go. The Hewitt outfit, and then, of course, the other cupboard outfit are now completely out of the way. They have been taken out of the picture entirely, and I don't think now, with, what, about a year and a half left, I don't think we're going to have any trouble at all with the Diamonds or the Dimitrievs over here. I think we are distant enough from the pair of them for them to not actually be a bother anymore, which is very good indeed. I'm very happy about that. So we can just, you know, get on with our own sort of stuff. And I think next time what we will do is we will try our best to get something over to the Grand Hotel. Let's try and get something served to them. So either, what was it they wanted? The Cordials or the Gin. We'll try and get one of those two things set up. It might be quite complicated and it might require the purchasing of multiple buildings and extra staff and all that kind of stuff. But I think we should get that done because of course it's a good thing because we've had the hotel kind of on our books for ages and we've never sold them anything. We've not sold them a single drop of anything alcoholic at all, I don't believe. Um, and also it will help us complete one of our goal things if we have a nice exclusive arrangement with them. So we'll try and get that sorted next time. I don't quite know which one is the easiest of the two to get sorted, but we shall have a look at that and see how we get on. But yeah, we'll do all that kind of stuff next time out. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in City of Gangsters. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. I just want to point out the danger of blasting fire into the face of somebody who has not got any kind of headgear on. Let's suppress the pants off that thing. I always knew hiding on a park bench would be no good. Oh no, it's a terrifying disc thing. Could the alien shoot him with such force <laughs> that he loses his hair, which is just ridiculous. <laughs>